seven figure grand from across the room. I see your patience are short with all these dancing fools. I see that you're the type of girl that likes a tattoo. I see the way you looked at me when I can walk through. So don't hesitate, grow a single night after night. Don't let the night go. Now don't let it go. All right, it is another week of the Twisted Hour here on WBUZ95.com. Actually, the radio station is down uh, due to the COVID-19 uh, COVID virus, and, and we hope that uh, everybody in New Orleans is uh, getting better and, and back on their feet and whatnot, and you know the actual station will open up and everything again here soon. Uh, in talking with the... the uh, Radio station uh, producer and management and whatnot, uh, they're hoping to have everything kind of back up and running uh, by next week. So, fingers crossed, you know, we, we hope that uh, Alfred and everybody are doing better for next week. And uh, this week we have a fun show. I'm doing the intro today um, and, uh, because Kelsey is busy getting her stuff ready to join us. And we have, uh, Bree is also going to be helping out today. I'm going to do the first half of the show the first segment, and then she'll take over the second half of the show uh, because we have little ones, and since we're all at home and we're doing things, you might have heard uh, my my three-year-old, uh, Riley, here in the background. She's, like, munching on Honey Nut Cheerios and whatnot. You going to say hi? Nope, she decided to be quiet. All right, so we have a really cool show this week. We have Stan Eston and his wife, Laura, uh, Laura Myers. They are from Canada. Uh, Laura is a Twisted Angel. Uh, she's been with us for almost two years. And uh, Stan is, uh, you know, he has a day job, but he took up photography uh, shortly after Laura began modeling. And he's become quite, a, you know, quite a good photographer in the meantime. So he's had uh, lots of opportunity, obviously, to work with Laura. They've been published multiple, multiple times. Uh, they do a great job at working together. They're a great team. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to talking to them. So we will be back in a few minutes. Kelsey and I will be back with Stan and Laura. So hang on. We'll be right back with Stan and Laura. Bobby from the Twisted Angels Australia bringing you the thunder from down under. The, tune in to the Twisted Hour here on WBUZ 95 Wednesday nights at 8pm on the Orange Radio app or WBUZ 95.com. Peace! I see your patience are short with all these dancing fools. I see that you're the type of girl that likes a tattoo. I see the way you All right, and we are here with Laura and Stan as promised. Uh, Laura is a twisted angel from Canada. Her husband Stan Hi. is uh, he's also a photographer, so that works out really well. So uh, she has no excuses for not having any fresh images when she needs them. So, so welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, hi. Thanks for having yeah. us. And of course, we got Kelsey, and, and I'll be uh, I'll be here for the first segment, and then uh, Bree will step in for the second segment after we break for for ads and stuff, so we can pay for our show. And then, um, so anyway, Laura has been with the Twisted Angels for about I don't know about a year and a half, almost two years now, I guess. It's yeah, been a, it's, it's yeah, and um, and and Stan, how long how long have you actually been modeling, Laura? Um, uh, about as long as I've been with Twisted Angels, about a year and a half, coming up two years. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because I know I yeah. I remember when you submitted really? stuff, you submitted stuff that I I remember when we first got it, we had to get it, we had to have you send it in because they're like really small files. So we could, we went to go blow them up. We could, they were really badly pixelated, so we had to get that done. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, 
Now, Stan, Stan, were you always a photographer, or was just something you kind of fell into because she was doing the modeling, and it was something you know that you were interested in? It just kind of worked out that way. Yeah, I just fell into it actually, and it's exactly what happened. I watched her do the modeling, and I watched other people take her pictures, and I happened to take one on my cell phone mm. at a photo shoot, and the photographer she had who was really good. Mm. Um, he wanted to see the picture I took, and he was blown away, and he took my angle instead. Uh huh. Well, that's and cool. Showed, yeah, and I showed Laura, and she was apt about it. She's like, "What?" She kind of liked my pictures more than his, so we went from there. And you probably don't talk to that guy anymore either. Well, he's, he's, <laughs> he's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he still, he still, uh, he still talks to us. So. Oh yeah, he's a good guy. That's he's good. Yeah, he's talking a lot. Actually. Yeah, uh, that's good. He's that's good. Thanks for good guys. Awesome. Yeah, I actually paid him to come down and actually spend a weekend and show me what it, what functions a camera could could do for us. Yeah, and actually looking and, and things like that, and that was huge benefit mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, taking the yeah, taking the lens cap off is very it. important. Yeah. I'll be at a photo shoot, and I'll go to take a picture, and I keep forgetting the lens to take the lens cap off because I'm so wrapped up with what I'm doing. So, so that's a that's that's a running that joke. Sounds kind of like a joke, but like I can't tell you how many shoots I've been on, and the first three pictures or so are like, oh yeah, the lens. <laughs> yeah, we haven't done that yet. No, the camera yells at me if it's on. It's like it yeah. do anything. Just you know, it's dead quiet. But I can see that happen back. The older cameras, for sure. Oh yeah. Which I'd like to look at those someday too. Yeah. Well, I used to I used to collect cameras. I mean, I still have some, but you know, I got uh, my oldest daughter. She's 20, 24, and she actually was really into the old Polaroid cameras. So we would I would get those for her periodically. You know, I saw one somewhere. I'd get it, yard sale, that kind of thing. And uh, some of the older, you know, film count cameras, the brownies and stuff like that. I had some of those. Stumbled across what was called a mini brand, brownie, which was supposed to be their version of a compact camera at the time. And uh, the camera had never been used. I brought in to ha- I brought in to have it appraised, and uh, uh, the guy that appraised it said they didn't even. I mean, the spring had never been used as far as the shutter was concerned. It had never been used. So the mini brownie that I spent five dollars on at the uh, at the yard sale was worth a couple hundred bucks because it had never been used. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's that's awesome. So, but nifty um, thrifting. Yeah, I know, right? I know. So, getting back to that, I mean, what is what is it like in Canada in terms of trying to be an alternative model there? Because for for us for for here in the U.S., I mean, and Kelsey can t- can attest to it. You know, we actually we have our areas that are not as densely populated, like in the Midwest. But it just seems like with, with Canada, there's less, even less densely, you know, uh, populated areas. Plus, you guys are so spread out. So how do you how does that work? I mean, obviously with Stan there, that makes it a lot easier, right? But but just in general, how does that community work as far as the industry and the photographers and models in general up there? How does yeah, that work? Working and whatnot with others. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Actually, uh, where where we live, um, it's it's actually been uh, it's been pretty good. Like just a half a block from where we actually live, there is an alternative model photographer mm-hmm. that we got to know. Um, and oddly enough, we found out he goes to the gym that we go to. Yeah, he, he goes to the gym. That oh, we go nice. To. That worked out well. Yeah. yeah, it works out well. He actually hangs out with one of my best friends. No, he's dating one of friends. Yeah, he's dating one of my best friends. But, <laughs> but How lucky that is that? All, that? That had nothing to do with me. Like, I knew Mike before <laughs> he met my friend. Yeah. Um, and then we just found out in passing one night when we were talking to my friend that she was dating a photographer mm. and it turned out to be the person that lived like three doors down from us. Oh, wow. So then, of course, um, Drea, uh, Drea Marr, who yeah. was also a twisted angel, right. who was an alternative model, yep. um, lives just 15 minutes from us. We live on an island. Yeah, we live, we, so, like, we live on an island. Like, everybody's recently close. Yeah, 
so for us, it's, it's been actually really easy. Like, there's been so many opportunities for me as a model and even for Stan as a photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's been really, really great. That's cool. You know, and easy, yeah, like... Now, what was your reaction? What was your reaction the first time, as as a duo, as as a team, that you guys got published? What was what was your what was your first reaction when you submitted something and you got the notification? You guys you guys got published together. What was that like? It was like, oh my fucking god! I can't believe that we just got published. <laughs> honestly, like honestly, okay. So the very first publication we ever got sent up. I believe it was the very first weekend that Stan had got his brand new gear. His, so we bought um, his camera and these lights where he's sitting beside. So we set up our kitchen and we got a bottle of whipped cream. And I put on like these fishnet stockings and like this latex bodysuit. And Stan was like, yeah, let's, let's do this. We can rock this. So we did this shoot. And half naked blonde. I mean, how bad is it going to get? <laughs> Neither of us had much idea what we were doing, other than I had to look good. I knew I had to look good. Yeah. And other than that, we just rolled with it. And that was our very first publication. And that was in, I think it was Sweet Paint. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you, do you find yourself... When, when you're trying to get ideas for, for posing and even with stand with lighting techniques and stuff like that, are you doing a lot of research? Like you see things online or, or and you're like, I want to do something like that. Or, you know, I, I like the way that was done, but I want to try to do it a little bit different. How, how do you guys normally go about yeah, that when you're, when you're doing something? Is it inspired or like a raw idea, you know, from your head? Do you get both. inspiration from other people? Oh, absolutely. We do, like, I do send her things that I, I actually find attractive and, and that I would like to see in magazines. I'll send to her and say, mm-hmm. we could do this. And then we might try to recreate it or put our own spin on it. But we both have our own strengths. Like, she's very good at, at, at the editing side. And I try to take pictures without giving her much work to do on the editing mm-hmm. side. So that's where we gravitate. And then her posing is completely her. Uh, she's very good at posing. She's a natural at it. And then she doesn't really get too involved in my camera settings. If you will. Like that, she leaves the technical part up to me, which is fine. Um, because that's my strength, it seems. Mm-hmm. So, so. Yeah. We always come in, though, with, with an idea. Like, if we want to do something dark and, and brooding, we know that's how we want it to look. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. So, and I leave that up to him. Like, I, yeah. I can be a dark and brooding bitch. But, you know, and leave the camera settings up. <laughs> Don't laugh, Mike. You know it. I, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say a word because you know I work with a lot of women, and I, you know, if I say anything like that, I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to have a lot of dark and, and brooding uh, photo sets coming up here soon, and it's not because it was planned. It was going to be more along the lines of we heard what you said about us on the radio. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think that, um, in getting back to that, I think, you know, the fact that, you know, Laura's got a, a pretty good, uh, a good command of, of, she knows her body and how to pose and what's going to be flattering and what's going to work. And on the flip side, as a photographer, it's funny that you said that in terms of trying to um, eliminate work on, on the back end, on the post-production, because there are so many photographers that, you know, are joining our ranks, you know, you know, on a daily basis, if nothing else, but, you know, they, they come into it really only knowing digital, and, you know, for those of us that are old enough, because I've been in the industry for over 30 years now, but when you're using film, it was really important for you to, you, you really try and get it right the first time, because you, yeah. you may have had to, you may have to wait, you know, better. well, yeah, and, and not only that, though, yeah. You really only had to go what you were looking at through the, through the camera. You didn't have even, you know, the, the transition. A lot of people don't realize that the initial transitions were that uh, you went from, from film to what was called analog, where you were still using film, but you were uploading uh, the images through an analog disc onto a computer. 
and then you could kind of see that. And actually, the transition before that was you were using a special camera that you could take the shot. You would see it like on a video display on the camera, and it would hold it there for maybe about, I don't know, seven seconds. I think it was. It was some odd number. And you would see it there, and you could really kind of basically, you know, could, did they blink? Is it good? All right, good. And then, oh, that's gone. Okay, well, we're pretty sure that one's good, and we can move on to the next one. But prior to that, you didn't have that. So when you were working the film, it was really important for you to try and get, nail it down before you even took the, the image, before you took the shot. Because depending... You know, I, when I first started off working in studios and stuff, you know, you sent the film out, it got developed, it came back a week later. The worst, the worst thing you wanted to do as a photographer was have to call those people, and especially because at the time, I started off in family photography. So, family portraiture and working with kids and stuff like that, the, the last thing you wanted to do was call that family and say, Hi, this is Mike from Olin Mills, and um, I'm just calling to let you know that, <clears throat> unfortunately... Um, we're going to have to schedule a reshoot because, you know, your images didn't come out quite <laughs> quite you know, nicely or whatever. So, and then, you know, half of the people would want to say, well, we could, can we see them anyway? And we're like, okay, well, you can come and see the proofs where your kid's like hanging off the table and, you know, or, or blinking. And, you know, because catching a blink at that point in time was, you know, you had to really be, you have, had to have a good eye. You know, it's not like now where you take the shot and you're like, oh, I can see you blinked here. People are lazy. They don't think about it. We were trained to catch it in the lens. So the fact that you're making the comment, I, you know, trying to make as, as little work for yourself on the back end, whether for you or for Laura, on the back end, is that's kind of old school. And it, I, I, I like hearing that because you're eliminating some of that. People think that, you know, what we charge as photographers and stuff, you know, it's based on that. But you also have to take into consideration the post-production. So I think if you if you eliminate some of that, that at least from a photographer standpoint, from a business standpoint, if I'm charging you X amount of dollars per hour that I'm that I'm shooting, okay, I also have to count in X amount of time for post production. So that takes even though I might charge you a thousand dollars for for a three hour shoot, okay, but then I spend another six hours, you know, you know, or seven hours doing editing. I have just you know, brought my my hourly rate from three hundred dollars down to about a hundred. So that's I mean that's you know a pumped up uh, 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 price. What's that, Kelsey? The shoot, like the models. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your job doesn't stop at the end of the shoot like a model does. You right. Work after it and want. Yeah, and a lot a lot of people don't realize. I mean, there's there's always you know a lot of debate as to you know who. Who uh, you know invests the most time and or money as far as shoots are concerned, getting prepared for them. But you know it's kind of six half dozen the other. The models have to do a lot of things you know prior to the shoot, whether it be you know getting hair and makeup done uh, or um, uh, getting outfits specific to to the shoot if they're doing that or, or whatever the case may be. All the things they have to do preparing for the shoot. Photographers do a lot of preparing for the shoot too, but. It's probably not as as intensive, you know, uh, except if it's like a specific theme shoot where you have to worry about specific set or props or something that maybe you have to, to get for the shoot. But, you know, but on the back end, it's post-production, yeah. Uh, the photographer is really, you know, depending on how much work or how much time-saving that they do during the actual shoot, like Stan and I were discussing there, too. But that really kind of determines how much post-production time you're going to have. There's thousands of techniques to use when you're doing photography as well, and yeah. remembering time of year and time of day, time of day the yes. lighting techniques, and indoor shoots versus the outdoor shooting shoots. Um, having all those things come into a play, you, you really, really do have to take your time on the background as a photographer to remember or recap mm -hmm. successful shoots in the past that had similar um, stages, if you will. Um, and then she'll do her yeah. makeup accordingly and, and outfits and, well, yeah, and also yeah. give me the ideas that remind me, of course, of what we did wrong the last time or what we can do better the next time. Or what you did right. Yeah, or what we did right. Or we just feed on each other. Right. Because it's, you know, that's the benefit of our relationship. Exactly. That's the wine talking, Stan. Just so you know. <laughs> She's so close to me right now, I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> I have a pretty good right hook, so. <laughs> You're sitting on my left, so I'm 
Yeah, I was gonna say you're sitting on his left, so you know you gotta. You, by the time you by the time you get adjusted, he's out. He's out of the room. Yeah, by the time you're in the perfect spot for a kidney shot. Don't forget. No, 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 no kidney shots. No kidney shots. Oh my god, yeah. I think his left side is off. I, I'm not allowed to do anything bad on the left yeah. side. Yeah, that's not a good side. Yeah, that's the bad side. So, so all the bruises are on the right side. No, they're yes, all left. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the put the phone book. Yeah. <laughs> And, and actually, what, what they're referring to is, is, and we'll get into that a little bit more the se in the second segment, but, um, you know, last year, Stan was in a really bad accident, so he was really out of commission there for a while, and, um, you know, it was, uh, the, as a team, they weren't really doing much, and obviously, Laura was spending a lot of time with Stan and, and helping him recover and everything, but, you know, obviously, we're really happy to, uh, you know, see that they're back on track and, and, you know, getting back to work and everything, that's, that's always, you know... You know, a bonus and a plus. So, do you find, Stan? Do you find well, and for both of you, do you guys have a preference whether you shoot, you know, studio in a studio or indoor setting versus an outdoor setting? Do you have any preference as to what you prefer to do? I think it's uh, preference wise outdoor mm -hmm. for sure. Um, we just like that the lighting is better. It's easier to work with. We did have our challenges with it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to go and we shot that three times. Three different times. Oh, wow. And we just happened to have three very similar days in a row. We just couldn't get it right. We'll never, do any, we'll never put in anything out that isn't 100%. Yeah. There are like. Right. Yeah. So we wouldn't expect to put that out. But uh, we ended up, I, I think I, I just I had the wrong position of the sun. I was too excited about things that were happening. And, did you know like at the end of like day one or day two that you were gonna want to come back and reshoot or was it not until later when you you know kind of got a good look at them all together or started trying to edit that you realized you needed something different out of it I think the first day, like, when do you feel like you... So she nailed yeah. it on the first day. Like, her, yeah. her poses were great. Uh, everything was good on her end. But I, I blew out the images out, to be quite frank. Uh, the sun was beating down on her, and, and I got my settings off a bit. And I just, I, I blew the images out in that regard. So she, um, it was disappointing because her, her, she was able to, to recreate it anyways. And yeah. <laughs> I got really good at a couple certain poses, let's yeah. just say. And we ended up taking all three days and making it into one really good It's kind of my signature now. So, yeah. 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 But that's, that's what about, yeah, I think, you know, What's kind of cool about that and working together is, you know, I mean, when you have poses that you like or you know this picture almost turned out the way you wanted to, you guys being able to work together and just reshoot, you know, when you want or have the motivation to just get right back out there because you're helping each other. You're not, you yeah. know, uh, scheduling it with someone you don't know that well. You know, you know what you want to tweak, and I, I yeah. feel like, you know, that, that'd be awesome to be able to really create a photo shoot or, you know, a set of images the way you want them to look. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Like we honestly, like I feel. We have mulligans. Yeah, we do. Like, and yeah. we're so <laughs> fortunate. My, I'm not a golfer, so. You don't mind anymore, but. I I, 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 I hate golfing. Yeah. I don't yeah. like it either. I like photography way more, but. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. yeah. I like throwing golf clubs. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like Kelsey. I, I'd rather throw the golf club. I'm more like Happy Gilmore, where he gets mad at the, uh, yeah. at the, at the, at the, at the minute, at the miniature golf. Yeah. I, I, I would be fighting Bob Barker. That would be me. And and, and probably losing too, but you know, either way. I oh yeah, right, yeah. So I'd have I'd have to I'd have to get the alligator to uh, to take care of him then from the movie. But but anyway, no, I, I get that too, like Kelsey was saying, working together, I mean with with I think that when you have 
you know, uh, couples that are teams in this industry, I think that it's it's got a lot of benefit in that. How do I put this? There, you know, I you know I was married previously, and you know, and, and I've you know girlfriends and stuff along the way that they would be a little jealous based on what I do. So with, with Bree, I mean, she came into it. She wasn't a model when she came into it. I kind of had to talk her into it a little bit, and then but once but she understood what I do, so she, I don't run into those potential, I guess, a, a, for lack of a better, better term, jealousy issues. But but working together. Like from your perspective, you're you're pushing each other and challenging each other to be better because you know what the other person is capable of. They may not necessarily always realize it or whatever, but but you as a part, you know them well enough that you feel that you know. I know you can. You you've done this pose before. You can nail this, you know. Or she'll sit there and say to me, "Look, I, you 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 know how to do your angles. You're just you're just off today. So you you need to get your shit together. So and it just you know and it is." You know, she'll get mad at me a little bit. You know, well, I don't know. How mad's kind of a strong word. It's more along the lines of, you know, Mike, you've got so much. Other, yeah, well, yeah, we'll go with mad. But, but um, she's Irish, so we can go with mad. But um, so, oh, I know, right? So, uh, yeah, well, this is true. You should see my knee. But no, anyway, the um, the, the issue being that she'll be like, you know, you've got so much stuff you have going on that you're not concentrating on the shoot. You need. You need to tune everything else out. You need what we call photo, uh, uh, photographic therapy, and you just you just tune everything else out, and you go and you shoot, and and that's what you do. And I actually got that from a, a good friend of mine, um, uh, Rolando Gomez. Uh, he was a photographer for Playboy for a long time, and now he does a lot of traveling and he does a lot of workshops. But I've known him for years, way back to the Playboy days. And um, I have he had both of his. Um, copies of photographic therapy i have both of them in digital format i mean if you want uh stan i'll get you uh, copies of those i have to dig them up somewhere there i have them i have them somewhere on a on an external hard drive but i'll have to find them and, and get them to you but it does kind of give you that you know it's something that you kind of lose yourself in what you're doing and you just you're focused on that pun intended and then um you know you just you feel better and kind of refreshed and back to you know the real world after that but you feel like you've accomplished something that's more a part of you and and whatnot so i i you know everything that you're saying i think is really important i mean there's uh there's a, a couple that that uh does really well her name is jenny b and her husband's name is josh and uh they do a lot of stuff together they do workshops and they're they're a great team I mean, obviously, they work with other people, too, but, you know, as a team, you can definitely tell there's that chemistry there, and I think you see the same thing with Stan and Laura. Hopefully, people see the same thing with, with Bree and I. You know, it's just a matter of, and, and you can develop that chemistry with anybody, really. You know, people that I work with, like today, when I posted that thing about Crystal today, Crystal uh, came to a, a casting call for us uh, early on, and like in early 2013. She's been with us ever since, and she was just... I saw that. Well, we, well, we asked her to come in. When we did that, it was like our first really big casting call for Twisted Angels. And she comes out. We asked everybody to bring, like, try to bring three different looks. She comes in with her, her pinup look, which was great, right? She came in with this, like, crazy-ass, like, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic look. And it was just, you know, she she really rocked it. And then she, Oh, and then she had, a, like, a gas mask and... Um, and uh, uh, like a latex outfit, so it was just like she had three really distinct looks, and we're like she 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 hit a home run from the gate. So, um, but but she's so versatile, she's so much fun to work with. We've had so many so many things that have been published in in galleries and all that other stuff that you're always going to find somebody like that. It may not necessarily be the person you're you're seeing or whatever, but it's kind of nice to have. A, a number of people that you can work with and have a good working relationship with you get into there like Stan working with Drea too and working with you working with Janie and stuff like that you have multiple people you have a good relationship with that everybody brings a little something different to the table so you, your creative juices are flowing there and and you have a good time and you come out and you make some really you know awesome uh, art and you know depending on what your goals are, you know, you, you, you attain the goals, hopefully you attain the goals that you're, you're looking to, you know, to attain. Now, what, what are some of your goals ultimately? I mean, obviously you guys, uh, well, this one, Stan, what were you doing before you started playing a photographer with the rest of us? 
watching, really. Um, I didn't even have a social media account. <laughs> oh, I know, because we had to talk her into telling you to get one, <laughs> to make one, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not really my thing, and, and uh, I mean, I'm social. And you like, oh, can you send so-and-so a message? I'm like, dude, can you get, like, a freaking social media yeah. account? Like, I'm social, but I'm more of a social and person kind of guy. I have a lot really? of friends, a ton of friends, but she... She's always been that way, and she's gravitated towards um, internet gaming, etc. And I've never been that guy. Um, that's always been her thing. But when she started taking up modeling, and and we had different photo shoots, some I could go on, some I couldn't go on, um, just for professional reasons. But um, before that, yeah, yeah. And, and I, well, I didn't take pictures. <laughs> yeah, he drove his motorcycle, went to work. Yeah. 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 Fine. yeah, no, I just, I, you know, I've always, yeah, no, I hung out, work on motorcycles, that kind of stuff. That's my, my thing. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm lucky that a lot of my friends are artists and tattoo artists. And oddly enough, I found out two of them are photographers. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were before. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the show just, wait a minute, the show is no longer PG-13, we are now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I do work with, with my hands for a living anyway, so yeah. I guess it kind of makes sense, really, all in all. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Well, yeah, and kind of like, it sparked that, that uh, I guess, create a, a different outlet for your creativity and, and whatnot, you know, the artistic side yeah. of you. And that's, what you know, we there are a number of tattoo artists that I know that also... You know, they, they do things on the side that are, are are related, whether it be they paint or they, you know, just draw other things and stuff like that, or, or they take up photography or some other, you know, creative outlet. Um, Halo from, uh, from Ink Masters, he's a good friend of ours out of Maryland. Um, he yeah, does, I, he, I know too. yeah, he sells paintings for like hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars, but they're amazing. I mean, we were at Baltimore last year, and uh, he had paintings there. And the, this is the funny part. He had paintings of some of the characters from the Game of Thrones TV series, but, but he had never watched the TV series. So, I mean, he, he saw images of them and whatnot, but he, he painted these things. It was just really amazing, the stuff that he's done. And, you know, he's, he does a lot of stuff like that, so... You know, yeah, that, that creative outlet is there, and like you said, Stan, there's a lot of people out there that we, what we call our GWCs, they're, you know, guys or girls with cameras that, um, you know, they do it for fun or whatever, may not necessarily be serious about it, you know, although there's some of those people, that as how do I put this, the ones that are GWCs, I, I feel, aren't taken as seriously as what we would call a hobbyist. A hobbyist wants to do well, 
from the perspective they they really want to create legitimate art. I think GWCs are looked down on from the perspective they're not necessar necessarily looking to create legitimate art as much as they're trying to um, you know get in somebody's underskirts as as Kelsey said I was, I was trying to I, I was really I was really trying not to yeah I was I was really I was really trying not to envision Stan in an underskirt so um, I, I felt that was that would have been awkward but that's actually a shoot that's actually that's oh great that's gonna be that's, that's going to be the old uh, role reversal where uh, you know Laura's the photographer and Stan's the model, so that that would be interesting. So that's oh, funny. I have visions for that. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> Stan's like oh shit. All right, well hey, listen. On on that note, we are going to step away. We are going to uh, pay some bills with our ads. So, and we will be back with the second half of the show. Brie will be on the show for the second half. Brianna Blue, she'll, she's my other half and one of our co-hosts. So I will be back a little bit. And there's Kelsey. She's having her beer while we're drinking. <laughs> so you might as well get a glass of wine while you have a chance here, Laura, while we're on break. So, All right, guys. We'll be right back with Stan and Laura. Yay. Seen your seven-figure grand from across the room. I see your patience how short with all these dancing fools. I see that you're the type of girl. Hey, this is Drea Dream with Twisted Angels, and you're tuning in to Twisted Hour here on WBZ95.com. Tune in Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for more. All right, and we are back with Laura and Stan. Uh, Bree is now going to take over for a little bit, and, and I'm going to step out. And obviously with the COVID virus going on, we're taking turns keeping an eye on our little one. So, And that's Peyton. Say hi, Peyton. Say hi. Oh <laughs> Peyton's going to say hi to everybody. She was rocking out to Super Bob, so... Uh, our, our our show themed our themed theme music for the show something like that one of those was something how that goes yeah. so I'm gonna steal Peyton she's not gonna like it but I'm gonna steal her and I will be back in a little while okay <laughs> hi Mike all right guys hi what's up so it's been a while since I had done one of these shows it's been like a few years you know had some kids and yeah so um. How and are you guys doing? Yeah, Yay! definitely. <laughs> so one of my main questions that I want to ask before we get all into the the deep radio show questions, um, what is the weather like in Canada? Um, right as we speak. Just sure. Where we are. <laughs> That's kind of a lovely question. A couple icebergs in the north. <laughs> A couple yeah, icebergs. I'm under my igloo. I'll take a look. <laughs> it's, it's nice, though. It's, it's actually nice. Right now, like today, we had um, uh, blue skies. I think it got to 12 yeah. Celsius. So, 12, 12 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so we were outside mowing. I was mowing <laughs> along because Stan can't. Right. Yeah. You know, it was nice. Like, it's we're not snowed in. I mean, we're inside because so, of this yeah. pandemic, but... Well, yeah. yeah, of course, but, like, it might, okay, this is gonna sound like a really dumb comfort from a stupid American, but There's we no kind of always think of Canada as just always being cold and snowy, and the one time I've been there, I had to keep relighting my cigarette because it kept going out, so, like, weather-wise, you guys have kind of normal seasons, or are there parts that are just, like, cold year-round, or... It depends where you are in, in Canada as well. It, yeah. it sounds like you were in the prairies, <laughs> maybe. But uh, on it the was island, a ski we, resort. <laughs> oh, well, oh yeah. Man, you know. yeah. So we're West Coast, like we're. Oh yeah, I just heard how dumb that is now. Ski resort. <laughs> no, 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 Like there's no dumb. Like honestly, it's 2020. There's no dumb. We are like about as West Coast as you can get. So we have. Pretty much everything. Like we do, we have a summer, we have a fall, a winter. 
<laughs> and then we have 2020, which fucks everything up. Oh yeah. yeah. It's it's mild weather, anyways. We don't we don't dip too far below zero, and we don't get too hot. Gotcha. So, okay. Speak for yourself, man. I get super hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. That's how we always get, though, us women. We get hot when most are freaking cold. I mean, it's yeah. nuts. Hormones suck. Yeah, Maryland weather has I been, get, like, it's like Mother Nature's drunk. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of like me. <laughs> so, um, so how long? Oh, I'm sorry, Brie. No, you're okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask how long are you guys together, and at what point in your relationship, like, pretty. Note, Sarah and Sam, and you started getting into you guys pretty like low key norm before for any period of time before that. All I heard was where we low key normal, and I'm not sure we ever got in that. <laughs> yeah, you kind of you, you kind of broke up a little bit. <laughs> you good? No, no, really. Clearly, you need to take this one, babe. Well, yeah, it did kind of break up, so maybe, maybe I could ask her to redo the question. Yeah. Kind of kind of sum up your question. Uh, basically, just how long were you guys together before you started getting into, like, modeling and photographing together? So, 20... 24 years? Yeah, about... So, 24 years, give or take? Like, awesome. Depending? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so about 24, or no, I guess about 23 years, she started modeling, and then at around 24 years, I started taking the pictures. Yes. Yeah, that's about right. So, yeah. Sweet. Quarter of a century. Yeah. <laughs> now, wow. I know Mike touched on how long you'd been uh, dabbling into photography there, Stan, but uh, to recap for me, how long have you guys, uh, you know, or you, not guys, plural, <laughs> how long have you been uh, dabbling in photography? Uh, it was October of 2018. Yeah. Oh, okay. I started, yeah, I started taking it seriously around then, um, and it, we came off of a shoot with another photographer, and I always kind of just helped out made sure they had everything they needed and I just kind of watched and I snapped a couple of pictures that that Laura liked a bit more than the photographer that we were using at the time <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of awkward but he was such a good dude and, and he actually uh, was excited about what I had done as well that he encouraged me and then well, we, that's awesome we, we, yeah he was super super enthusiastic about it so we paid him to come down for a weekend which we didn't need to do. He would have come down anyways, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's professional courtesy. And he gave me some pointers. Uh, I bought a camera and bought the right gear, and he's been a, a, a lifesaver, I guess, at times. When I, Actually, he's pretty much, yeah, he yeah, pretty much... He could have, he yeah. could have said, no, dude, I'm not going to give up my secrets or all of that, but he was very enthusiastic about the crowd. How did it feel? No, he was very forthcoming, yeah. like, honestly, like, we owe him a lot. His biggest disappointment was going to be that he was going to lose his model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, pretty know. cool of him to, uh, you know, encourage that. You know, some yeah. get very territorial. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know some up here do, anyways. <laughs> Up down here, I don't know where I'm at on the map. <laughs> Me neither. Um, so, do you have any questions that you want to ask Kelsey before I um, ask my other question? Sorry, you broke up at the end there. Did you? <laughs> The, do you have any questions uh, for Stan or Laura before I ask my other one? Sorry. No, I, I think I kind of covered most of mine. I keep interrupting you by accident because I got a lag here. <laughs> so You're all right. You go on ahead, girl. 
Alright, so, um, since we're on the topic of photography, is there anything that you two as a couple photographically have a goal set to do? Like, is there anything that you guys enjoy that you haven't really, um, done yet? Like, concepts? Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, we actually, whenever we have a great idea, you know, on a Friday night, we'll have a great idea <laughs> after a few drinks. It usually involves travel. Uh, but we'll, we'll make a list, <laughs> a list, actually, um, of shoots that we want to do. It's about 25, like, like yeah. lists and long. By Monday, right? by Monday morning, we'll go through it and actually cut out the ones that were just... You know. Drunk and stupid. Yeah, and then we end up with a list. <laughs> so we've been working our way through. Ideas. Yeah. yeah, we've been working our way through those. Like, yeah. Um, and we've done some of them. Don't give any ideas away, Sam. No, but some, <laughs> some of them have been published in the last year, and um, that was the hitchhiking one that you did. No, uh, we didn't do that. Yeah, we did. You were there. No, we did. You, you were there. <laughs> oh, that one, right? That you one. were there. <laughs> so yeah, there's just little little things like that. Okay, that's so why, that's why we wrote them down. Line. But um, we work our way through the list, and then when we have uh, time, we do them. Yeah. Um, you know, you your guys' situation is almost like mine, except I've only been with Mike for five years, going on five years now. So, I mean, we don't typically get the shoot time that we want to do because of, you know, kids. But, uh, yeah. so typically yeah, yeah, our yeah. our shoots are at like 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. loading on the coffee. But, <laughs> um, yeah. we haven't really done much lately. I know I want to do a shoot with bacon. Hush. Secret. <laughs> Bacon, uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, like, cover myself in bacon and do an implied yeah, shoot. that's kind of Canadian, Green. Yeah. That's kind of a Canadian <laughs> thing, like... Even though it's not Canadian bacon? <laughs> <laughs> it's maple syrup and bacon. Oh, maple syrup. Are you going to pour That is an awesome syrup? idea. Oh my god! <laughs> Maple syrup. Once your kids get older, it gets way easier to like do all these shoots. Yeah, <laughs> I'm counting down the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. It like, so fast. I'm 50. It it only took like 23 years to get to this point. So when you say it like that, it sounds like a long. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's still hope. Like, there is still oh, hope. Oh, there is hope. There is hope. <laughs> uh, there With is alcohol hope. comes hope. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, uh, hmm. How about you, Laura? How long have you, um, how long have you been modeling? Um, I think I did my first shoot in 2017. Okay. Um, yeah, so just about three years. That's awesome. And you like it? I love it. Honestly, I love it. I love everything about it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I never thought... I would ever see myself becoming a model until I met Mike and he kind of like encouraged me to do this first shoot back in 2015. So, yeah, it was it was definitely a um an eye opener, I guess, to all the opportunities and and different things that that you can uh set yourself up to do and yeah, definitely. So. I understand. And be in control of yourself. Like, do for yourself on your terms, like, as a model. You know, you're choosing your boundaries, your comfort level. You have control in a way that a lot of people don't. And I, that's something I've always loved about it. If I don't, you know, want to take pictures or I don't, I never have to do something unless I've committed to it. And, um, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I'm not. And sometimes, you know, I think that, the, you know, the thing here is sometimes even if you do commit to something, 
it's okay to back out of it too. You know, it, yeah. it is, you you have to do what's what's right for you. Definitely. You know, I mean, ultimately, it's you, and modeling is all about your body and and what you're comfortable doing. So, but oh yeah, I, absolutely. I love it. Like it's. <laughs> I honestly never thought I would be in this situation. I remember when I first sent my selfies, you know, to Twisted Angels. I, uh, I never thought I remember I those. Get, right? I know. Like, <laughs> honestly, I, I never... I can remember it. sending in mine. <laughs> I remember yeah, yours, like, too. <laughs> I never thought it would go anywhere, and I've been published more than I ever thought I would be. And I'm great with that, you know, and, and for us, I think for me, not even, not even for us, but now for me, and especially with what's happened in the last year, it's more about now my journey that I, you know, begun with Stan, and, yeah. it, and it's so much bigger than just me as a person, it, it's me and, yeah, it's and so Stan, certain. it's... You Might know, I add, you don't, yeah. you don't even look your age, so kudos to you. <laughs> That's what I said at break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to touch on that little tidbit of information <laughs> there. Thank you. <laughs> Irregardless. Thank you. My family keeps me young. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we work at it. Though. Yeah, my family makes me older fast. <laughs> no, no, stop. We do have those days. Yeah, no, we do now. Like yeah. we do. We actually did up until about 22 years ago. <laughs> Our daughter's 23, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's real, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking real. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, am I supposed to drop the f bomb on this? I'm not. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> no, it's true. Like, it, it is so true. Like, so many people... So, here's the thing. Like, people look at the pictures that we take. Stan and I are really great at taking pictures and making them look awesome and, and depicting something that is someone's fantasy somewhere. You know, but in reality, we're doing it because we like doing it. and, and But we're still just people... And we live our life, and our kids sometimes hate us, they sometimes love us. You know? Right. It's just, like... Yeah. Um, and you do it together, it's even better. And supporting each other at the end of the day. And that's what it's all about, and definitely. Just, yeah, exactly. It, it, yeah, I, I mean, publishing on the cake, but I mean, if yeah. you, you really love the art and, you know, the process of making beautiful images from either side of the camera, I, I mean, you know, the finished picture is the reward. Everything after yeah. that is just extra. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think for us, it's more than just the finished picture. Like, we have probably right now... 16 or 17 sets untouched, unedited, just over the last year and a half that we've shot, and we haven't touched them. For us, it's the time spent. Like, it, we're, we're reinventing ourselves. It's bonding. Ourselves. Like, we're, we're evolving. Yeah, we are. Like, we are. We have to. And that's... But that's together. The, it's it's the new chapter yeah. together. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that's always been, uh, that's, you know, not that it pertains to the show, but that is why we've been together for 26 years, is because we would do those things together and support each other and evolve. It just so happens that we're both good at it, so it worked out. We're Hell both yeah. good at our work. It, yeah, yeah, we enjoy it, and <laughs> whether, yeah, it, it's been a good reception on, on, on that end. You're easy to look at. That helps. Hey, that's a bonus. Model. <laughs> She's a model. Yeah, right. Those are selfies. No, <laughs> are both pretty fucking easy on the eyes. Right? I mean, come on, now. That's good. We actually have a shot. We actually have a shoot planned. And Mike, who we chatted about very early on in the show, uh -huh. that lives like like a half a block down, we have a, a shoot plan that we're going to do mm -hmm. together. 
Yeah. Yeah. Together. So both of you are going to be in front of the camera. Yes. Okay. Not very close. That is the one thing (laughs) Mike and I haven't done, except for like one picture. No one can take the picture for us. It it sucks. Um, You know what? I will. I've got a photographer I can hook you up with. Beaver tails and pictures. Yeah, beaver tails and pictures. That could be a shit. And bacon. And bacon. With the syrup. You're like almost throwing up. Oh my gosh. I heard there's a random beaver. I think it was in Canada. Like, come on. Right. Our national animal is a beaver. Come on. Yeah, it is. It is. No, no, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. It's what not? It, it should be. It's not a beaver, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Canadian goose. No, it's from Canada, but is it actually? We don't Maybe not very that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, my gosh. Sip to that. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's a goose. It's a Canadian goose. That's why on the loony, there's a loony. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beaver. <laughs> I'm adding comedy, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. What are you... Kelsey's over here showing her phone screen and whatnot. <laughs> what are you... I looked up their national animal, and Laura was right. It's the damn beaver. Oh. <laughs> Yes. It's a fun word. Yeah, it's a fun everybody word. loves <laughs> Oh, man. This, this is probably the artist that I've laughed during a interview for the radio <laughs> show. Not the good thing. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get invited back to this. This has been fun. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I've always wanted to visit Canada. I'm, I've never really been. I mean, I know you guys have legalize the, you know, the good stuff, but that, we that would, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, we'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like literally. <laughs> what? Nice. <laughs> what's, what's what? <laughs> what? What? Okay, um, so back to business, and Kelsey's face froze into a weird, <laughs> oh, a weird pose. <laughs> um, Kelsey's always beautiful. Yes, she is be- <laughs> even oh, when she there. makes faces. She wasn't there. <laughs> um, I, I understand that you had recently uh, recovered from your accident. I know you can't talk much about it, but um, what were the things that you missed doing the most during your recovery? Oh, I'd say top of the list was shooting, actually. Um, being able to shoot was, yeah. was really important uh, part of what we were doing, and yeah, and the inability to do that really sucked because I broke both arms mm. and, 17. and 17 bones in total, That's et cetera. But horrible. I am so glad that you are better and you are able to shoot. Um, <clears throat> hearing that and seeing her post, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like, accidents are not fun. My dad got into a motorcycle accident, and he, like, flew into a telephone pole, and he was completely... mm, He didn't look like himself 
for a while. Yeah. He, um, he broke his esophagus, so he had to get, like, stents and stuff put in, and it was just, it was bad. <laughs> I'm Never, sorry, Brenda, it kind, kind of been easy. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it, it really wasn't. Easy. And, no, um, I know. uh, what, what happened? Yeah, so y you don't really realize how hard it is to try and lip-read somebody <laughs> until it actually happens. <laughs> he would get so irritated because I wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, and I'm, I'm definitely happy that you are on the mend, man. That's awesome. A few months away from being fully recovered, or probably about a year, but... Uh, he needs more surgery, but because of the uh, COVID-19, um, it's been... CTs are... are it's been, it has been, been put on hold. Yeah. So, surgeries and CTs, and, and it's, you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, people that have greater injuries yeah. and, and the chance of loss of life deserve those spots yes. over somebody who can't, you know... Hold the camera. Hold the camera at the end of the day. So if, if they can get in and have that surgery ahead of me, then I'm, I'm more than happy to see that happen. Right. So, so I'll probably be about a year before I can uh, properly use my arms, but, but we're managing. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. Uh, let's see. Um... Hmm. Topics of uh, tattoos. Do either of you have a tattoo that is uh, sentimental and has value yes. to it? Yes. I have a couple, actually. Mm -hmm. I have three. She got lots. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have lots of tattoos, but I have three that are very sentimental to me. So... One of them is the butterfly that's on my right hand. Well, I, I'll show you guys, but the radio. Yeah, it's very pretty. It. Yeah. To all the listeners, Thank it's very you. pretty. <laughs> so this butterfly, it represents Stan's mother, actually, and she passed away four years ago, and we were there when she passed. And in the week before she passed, she said to Stan and I that she'd always wanted a butterfly tattoo on her right hand. Oh, so okay. three weeks after she passed, I went and got this particular tattoo on my hand. Oh, that's sweet. And then, well, you know, it's, you, you do what you do for people you love. Like, she never right. had tattoos. No, she was a very Christian she woman, very, very and she so. would never have a tattoo. But she said she'd always yeah. wanted a hand tattoo. She said, I always tattoo. wanted a butterfly tattoo. And I said, well, where would you put it? And she pointed to her hand, and she said, I'd like it here. I said, well, good. Okay, Stanley, you have way too many tattoos. Where you don't have any room for it. So Stan went and got the manly butterfly tattoo. Yeah, it's a little bit more dangerous. Than this one. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. more dangerous. <laughs> but, yeah, it's not really a butterfly, but it is. Yeah. And so that's what we did in, in memorial to her. And then I have my daughter's name on the back of my neck. And then I have Stan's initials down my spine. Mm -hmm. oh, and those okay. are my three most important tattoos. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Other than your dangerous tattoo on your hand there, Stan, do you have any others? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, there's quite a few, but my, my whole back is done. Um, I don't know if you can see that part of it, but you can see it. We're show and telling. Show and telling. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to show and tell. There's quite a bit on there. Holy sh... Nike. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of them. That's my rack right there. I don't think you can see it, but... I see yeah, the rack. Kind of yeah, you can see my rack? I see it. <laughs> it's there. So, yeah, no, that's probably the biggest piece I have, and then... That's awesome. Yeah. You have... The other ones. Yeah, yeah. I have our daughter's name on, on my back, and... Okay. Uh, grand, grandkids' names on my arm. Yeah, because he's a granddad. Yeah. Um, Aww. Yeah, those are, those are the big ones. Yeah. yeah. Where awesome. are some tattoos? Did some scarring last year, of course, from the accident. <laughs> 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 I 
I'm going to hold off on scarification. I'm not ready for yeah, that yet. I, I would recommend it, but yeah. Right. He, he would, Those are your yeah. your battle wounds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've got a few of those for sure. <laughs> Mike does. Yeah. I don't. I mean, other than my sister being very vicious. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, we were just talking about sentimental tattoos. Oh, yeah, I don't have any sentimental tattoos. I don't care about anybody. We're doing show and tells. I can see one on your Yeah, I can see one on your arm, Mike. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn, giving away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both got king and um, queen tattoos. Is that what that is? Yes, they're crowns. So, we ended up getting crowns on each other's wrists. Love it. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I love it. All right, well, I don't, I'm going to go, and Mike's going to hop in for me. Thanks, guys, Bye, for everybody. chatting with me. Bye, Bruce. Bye. Stay safe, baby. How can we tell her to say safe, but not me? I mean, I'm the one in trouble with her most of the time. So. <laughs> oh, we lo oh, we lost Laura. There's Laura. We lost Laura there for a second, but she's back. We lost Laura and staying there for a second. So, well, that was fun. I got to change diapers, and I got to do all kinds of fun stuff during that. I don't miss that. Yeah, well, you know... <clears throat> Every time I think I'm done having to do that, then you know Bree gets pregnant again. I, I don't know how that happens. Don't miss it. I will miss it. Well, I don't know. Did uh, did we talk? Did Bree talk a little bit about uh, what you guys have planned coming up? What you guys want to do this year and everything? What some of the things you want to try and do anyway? That or that you haven't done that you want to try and do? Oh well, I mean, I'm not sure that can be. Well, you know, that's, that's actually, a, it's, it, we did have some things planned, but of course, uh, between my injuries and then the pandemic, um, those are probably on hold. Like last year, we started the year with Vegas shoots in mind, and we did that. We went out to We actually, yeah, we flew out to Vegas in July. Yeah, mm -hmm. we went out, rented a car, went out to a Salt Lake, and did a great shoot there, went out to uh, Nelson. And actually, we have a cover coming up in yeah. June. In Tatted Skins, I think, one of the sets we've done, um, Tatted oh, with, Skin um, magazine. With James, yeah. James, James, James hit us up. James hit yeah. us up last year. We, I forget where we were at, but we were on our way home. And uh, got this weird phone call and message from Brittany, who's our GM. And she was yeah, all yeah. worried that this guy was trying to recruit uh, Twisted <laughs> Angels for another model group. And... You know, a model, another model agency or whatever, and it was just like big to do. And then, because he said he had talked to me before, and I'm like, well, you know, there are a couple people that talked to me recently, and one of them seemed a little shady, and I don't know which one this is because I'm driving, I, I can't look at my phone. So Brittany says, I'll handle this, and she goes, and she basically blasts the guy. And I was like, oh, and then, and then we, I figured we stopped to eat or whatever, and I was like, and then I'm getting caught up. I'm like, oh, no, this was the guy that was actually pretty cool. <laughs> so so we, had to, we had to call him back and say, well, I'm sorry, I mistook you for, for, the, for the other guy. So, yeah. but, uh, but uh, James seems like a pretty good guy. He's trying to get a lot of stuff started with what he's doing, and we're happy to help him with that, too, if yeah, we can. Yeah, awesome so. with us. Like, awesome. We're excited to be yeah. a part of, of what he's doing, and the, the set that, that he has for the June cover is is probably one of our best. It's, it's, we're pretty excited. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. That was one of the ones we did in Vegas. Now, is that something... When you're When yeah. you're shooting for publications, are you... I said, do, are you determined? Have you already been determined that you're going to shoot for the cover, or something that you're shooting for content? I mean, do they come to you and say, "Hey, we want you guys for a cover," or, or how do they? How do you handle that? Well, it depends. Like we actually. It out that way, no, you know, it certainly didn't. When when we first started shooting, we just shot to just shoot, mm -hmm. and we didn't even think we would ever be published, ever. So when we started getting published. Then we were like, oh, well, maybe we'll start shooting for sets. So we started shooting for sets. And then we've had a couple of different magazines contact us, say, you know, we have this theme coming up. Do you, can you do a shoot for this? And we're like, sure. So we'll 
we've done a few. Specific for that. Yeah, yeah, we have. We don't always, but we have. If somebody contacts us and says, we have this coming up, do you want to do a shoot for it? If we can manage that, we 100% will do it. Mm-hmm. Like, and then it, and it grew into covers. Yeah, and then it grew into covers. So then it became, well, we don't really want to just be in the middle of it. We want to be on the front of it. And yeah, we're getting it. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. We just have to be a part of it. Be a part of it. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, so it's... We still have growing pains, and sometimes we'll go up to, like we talked about earlier with the body canvas set, we'll go out with a, a specific shoot in mind, and... You know, a, a lot of the times because Stan is so amazing at what he does, we nail it. And sometimes because of um, things that happen beyond our control, we don't always nail it. But right, right. We always try to nail it. So I think you when, know, like when someone contacts one of you about doing a shoot, whether it's like something you're. You know, just shooting that might be in it or something, you know, that you guys are definitely going to be this spread or this cover or whatever. Do you guys get contacted as a pair or is it like sometimes one of you and then you recommend? Like, how does that how does that work? It's usually me that gets contacted. Um, oh, and sure. It's, it's the blonde. Yeah. You know, no, I, yeah, I have blonde hair, I, I have I, maybe yeah. some breasts, I don't know, like... I don't put myself out there. Stan <laughs> doesn't do nudes, no one texts him, like, come on, he needs some they just, too, they just guys. don't. They just don't realize he has underskirts. <laughs> He's got a pretty oh, great package, <laughs> like, he has a lot to offer. That's, yeah, you know, if you know I'm not even going there with. I'm not even you know, like. I'm not even going there with the whole package deal and a lot to offer with the underskirt. Because that's just going down. You know, th- this is well. It used to be a family friendly show, but um, <laughs> oh, are we supposed to be family friendly? My no, I'm, I'm, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. So your first mistake was getting us. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I know that you My know. First mistake was getting me. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, you know. But no, what cheers. we do, I I have so much that I've shot over the years that there's absolutely no way that I have edited everything that I have. So even when with my downtime last year, not shooting as much, and even with some of the stuff we're running into this year, I still have the option of of going back and looking at past sets and saying, oh, I've got something I can you know <laughs> give you guys for this publication. So because I I have a handful that will contact me on a regular basis and say, hey. Do you have anything that has? Uh, it was funny because like uh, the Definition magazine, uh, Willie uh, runs that. Good I love bu- Willie. Yeah, Just good. So you know, I love yeah, he's a good he friend of mine. Awesome. He's yeah, uh-huh. he's a really good friend. I mean, he lives in Pittsburgh, and I try not to you know hold that against him. But um, <laughs> I love Willie. <laughs> but uh, but he, he's he's really great. He'll hit me up and say, "Hey, do you have anything for this theme?" And this last theme, he had. Uh, and the poor guy, I mean, he really he he really works hard. He gets, you know, it's not just one issue every month. It is several issues that he does. Like he usually averages like three, maybe four different covers. Um, that because he, he gets he gets he gets so much content. Yeah, he gets so much content, and it's good. And he doesn't want to turn anybody away. So he hit me up and he said, "Hey, I, you know, do you have a couple sets for this for this uh, theme coming up for for jeans?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I probably actually I, I probably do that. I just have sitting around that I haven't edited stuff on, and some of it was more recent that I shot back in January that was just kind of sitting there, but I hadn't gotten an opportunity to really edit it. And uh, I sent him like six sets, and he all six got published, so that was kind of cool. Bree, Bree's one of the sets. Congratulations. Thank you." Um, we we've done a bunch of stuff with with Willie. He's a really good guy, like you said. He's uh, really good, down to earth. Um, he's just you know, like I said, I, I try not to hold anything against him living in Pittsburgh and all, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I love working with him. Like honestly, anytime I have anything, and in fact, he has um, one of our sets that we shot in Vegas, oh, okay. which is probably my favorite. Oh, cool. Um, and then he has another set that he asked us to do specifically on my uh, chopper, on my Harley. Mm-hmm. So I'm really looking forward to oh, yeah. putting those out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love Willie. Like, I love his magazine. He's amazing. I love him. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I mean, as far as publications, things have changed so much because he used to just, you know, associate publications with the uh, the the newspaper stand, the newsstand, you know, yeah, hard copies. Stuff. Obviously, we yeah. can kind of, you know, it's transitioned to, you know, primarily digital and even your your bigger publications like Playboy and even Inked Magazine, for example, um, you know, they, they rely heavily on uh, their digital, you know, sales just because just because of the fact that, you know, it's it's less overhead, so the profit margin is higher. But you know, the the, the only real bad thing is that you have so many, you know, mom and well, I don't say mom and pops, but you know, you have a lot of people that, you know, they do it as a fun thing on the side. They're not really sure what they're doing, so they really kind of put out a poor product. So, unfortunately, the 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 differential there is, you know, probably about one third of the the digital publications that are out there are, are really good quality. Yeah. To, that you definitely want to see yourself, you know, get into, and, and obviously right. the competition is a bit stiffer with them too. And like I said, most of them also offer, you know, your hard copies as well as the digital copy. And and then you got, you know, those other two thirds that are just people that they do it for fun, or you know, they don't really know what they're in doing, the, or they're in just the dance world. We call it a cattle call. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Everybody and everybody amateur. Yeah. It just it, so you know, you're not necessarily competing against a smaller group of more talented people or anything, but there are so many people that yeah. just get overpassed because you think about the amount of people submitting things, there can't be just one really intelligent, you know, good choosing person looking and spending time on each photograph or person yeah. or girl or whatever. Yeah. There's several people. There is, think about people having a bad... It's just so much more of a, a shit show, excuse me. No, yeah. it's so true. Like, it's so true. Like, we have... The, like, I, I think that there... We have a couple magazines that... You know, we really love getting in. There's a couple that we haven't been in that we want to get into. We're supportive of, of almost anyone that will want to be supportive of us. And right. anybody who puts out good quality content. Yeah. And yeah. That's what we're supportive of. We're supportive yeah. of quality. Quality is over quantity. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Absolutely. I mean, really, I don't, at the end of the day. Quantification. Yeah. Like, that you don't want to... Oh, we kind of lost Kelsey. We lost you on that one, Kelsey. What was your question? You cut out and then cut back in. What was your question? I, I, it wasn't... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It, it wasn't a question. I, I was just building off of what she said that, you know, you, you want it to be, you know, good content. You want it to be something that you're proud of. And if you're going to be in something, you want to be able to want to promote it or show it or... It, you know, put it out there. You, like, yeah. what's what do you personally get out of something that you don't want to tell anybody about or are embarrassed yeah. about? You want it to be something meaningful in some shape or form. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've had sets that we've submitted and pulled, and, yeah. I, and I know that's not a good thing to do, and you're not supposed to do that, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's... It's our art and it's our content. So if we're not comfortable where it's going, right, right, we don't want to be a part of it. Absolutely, we want to be a part of something that that we could go and have a beer with them, like you know, like. Well, yeah, and I, and I think that you know, and that's a good point. I mean, when you're looking at some of those people, once you developed a bit of a working relationship, like we we talked about yeah. Willie and. And Bob, Bob from uh, uh, Badass Online magazine is another one. He put really puts out a good, really good quality. We haven't, but yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely somebody that's got you know, uh, good, yeah, good good quality product there too. And and there's a number of them. There's you know, it's like I said, there there's enough good ones out there that if you concentrate on them and you're and you're keeping an eye on those things and and whatnot. And I think some of them are, are very unique, you know, in that uh, they do things that are specific themes or they do something that, I mean, every, every, every publication I think goes through a period where they go through a little bit of a theme. And, well, Hey, this month we're going to do like, uh, cars or we're going to do, you know, lingerie or whatever. But, you know, I think some of them, um, you know, do some really interesting ones and, and really provocative ones. And I think that's, that's good too, that you kind of mix it up and you, Show a little bit of you know versatility, both as a photographer and as a model too. So yeah. uh, shows that you can shoot some of those things, you know, and, and kind of go from there. Sometimes that's that's what when we shoot, that's what we'll do is we'll 
we'll shoot and we'll take those pictures and we'll look at the different magazines mm -hmm. and look at that and say, this would suit your publication, yeah. this suits your publication. Right. I won't bother you with this one, but maybe you'll like it. You know, so we do, we do filter that out in that regard. Right, so we right. Do shoot. Yeah, we do. So uh, not that like. What was that, Kelsey? No, I, I was just saying that's a, a really awesome, intelligent way of going a, about it, you know, like oh, yeah. taking what you have and yeah. like places, you know, you, you want to be a part of our publication, mm. you want to be in and seeing what you have to fit them. I, it's, Maybe yeah. it sounds silly, but I've never actually looked at it that way before. It's usually I, I see a publication I want and then I think about what I can do or shoot in time to fit it instead of previously looking at, you know, my portfolio and, and my personal stock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like for us in the last year, we've shot, we've been published, I think, 23 times in 11 different magazines. Mm -hmm. So 11 magazines, that's not a ton. We get to know, like, like, and that's my thing, like I do all the submitting to the magazines so I take a look through all the magazines, and I really try to get to know what, and, and Stan does too, like, and every magazine that we get um, submitted into, we buy it, we support it 100%, yeah, absolutely. because yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah, it's like, so important. We have to support each other, right? Oh, yeah. So we get to know the different magazines, so if we're out doing a set, and we think, oh, wow, you know, this would be good for, for Willie's After Dark because it's got some nudity in it and we mm -hmm. know that, you know, that's where it's at. Or, or we do a set for, uh, Baywatch who doesn't take nudity, but it's sexy. Right. You know, you, you, you try to get to know your, your, yeah, yeah we do that. We shoot mm -hmm. audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And then there'll be the odd one in between where we, it would be like a St. Patrick's thing is coming up, so she'll shoot for that. It's been gone. Yeah. It's coming gone. It's coming gone. But, yeah. But that's like that. <laughs> During the have another, have another glass of wine, Stan. It's all right. Have another <laughs> glass of wine. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's coming up in two weeks. Or Christmas. No. Or Christmas. He's, he's getting old. He's getting old. <laughs> yeah. Either way. But we will, we will take those and go, well, we can do a really great St. Patrick's thing. Yeah. Let's do that. And we were going to do that. Actually, I had this I have this top I bought from a local consignment yeah. store. Mm -hmm. Pre loved consignment. She's amazing. But we just ran out of time. So yeah. you can't shoot every day, like Yeah, I miss I, I miss I miss I, like that. I, I def I definitely miss, you know, when I would say the oh man, really from like nineteen ninety one Wow. Well no, actually from about nineteen eighty 88, 89. Re really, really, up until about 2013, I was shooting, easily shooting five five out of seven days. Most of the time, six wow. out of six out of seven. So, I mean, it was just, I, I, I enjoyed doing it so much. And, and um, you know, and then the last couple of years, obviously not shooting as much. I mean, I can, you get, once you get to the point where you can kind of pick and choose what you're doing because you've kind of done everything and you you don't want to feel like you're going through the motions. So you like to do yeah. things that are that are going to be a little more challenging with what you do. So, um, you know, I would say really from about maybe 2000, 2011 on, I, I started really concentrating on doing specific things. I mean, I'll do some of the, you know, the basic shoots and stuff like that, too. Um, but uh, trying to look for things a little more unique and, and trying to do those things. And, you know, Bree's got this idea for a great shoot that she wants to do. We just haven't, you know, gotten around to doing it yet. Um, so she, what's that? <laughs> oh, well, I, well Kel, I think Kelsey knows what it is because we've talked about it before. But, um, but uh, yeah, so. We need, to, we need to do a big group shoot. I mean, come on. Uh, well, you know what? Just the, the the logistics and the, the the logistics and the cost of trying to fly in like well over three hundred people for Twisted Angels for a shoot would be insane. So. I was I was 
was about to say, I I think most of us would want to do it yeah. enough to like be willing to pay our way. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you can't afford it. You can't. But like, I I don't think many of us would expect it all to be covered. Well, yeah. one of the things yeah, one of the things we wanted to do one of the things we wanted to do was try and set things up that we travel around and we're traveling around to the different regional groups and whatnot so that we can kind of do work with people in every region if we can and, and do it that way now that was part of what you know our event series and everything is supposed to be about is being able to get around and do that now obviously everything's been put on hold with the with the pandemic going on but you know hopefully you know by the end of this year beginning next year things will kind of start turning around a little bit and we can you know do do that traveling and whatnot and, and do those things um, but uh, we'll kind of see how that plays out. I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's kind of a, a trying time for everybody. But you know, we're we're plugging away. We're doing the show, you know, and um, uh, you know, putting together content, you know, like you guys and and everything. And you know, we're really I'm really glad we finally got an opportunity to get you on the show. I know that we had, you know, we, we had that scare with Stan. I mean, you know, you know, like like like. Honestly, like in the ICU, just to put it into perspective here, I'm not sure how many times the three weeks that he was in the ICU after his accident, we were told, I was told, because Stan was in a coma for a lot of it, I was told so many times he shouldn't be here. Yeah. Like, when they brought him, I made the 911 call uh, when he first fell. And from the time, and, and the first responders got to us within three minutes of me making the 911 call. Wow. So from that time, to him getting to the hospital, I believe it was about 40 minutes, mm. they actually tied his left arm off because he was bleeding so much. Like, yeah, well, for him, it's just in perspective, I felt three and a half stories. He fell 35 feet. Yeah, mm. uh, and fucked the rocks. Face down onto concrete with rebar sitting up. Yeah, he was impaled by rebar. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's the short list for you. I was told that he probably was not going to make it. 17 mm. broken bones and failed, and I lost half the blood of my body. So, wow. Um, I'm really not supposed to be here, but. But here, here you are, and you're you're replenishing. He is yeah. replenishing that that lost blood with wine. So he's good. He's he's good. He's good. So, but we, but we are we are really we are really glad you're here. I mean, I know that I I checked in with Laura on a regular basis to make sure, you know, everything, you know, see how things were going and, and whatnot, and let let her know that we were, you know, collectively, you know, both personally myself and Bree, but collectively as as a group. Uh, Twisted Angels was there for her if, we, if there was anything we could do to help and whatnot. So, you know, but obviously, you know, the most important thing is that you're, you know, on the mend and you're and you're almost uh, you're almost back to 100 percent. And ironically, physically, yeah, right. Well, physically, yeah, mentally, mentally, none of us are, yeah, mentally, none of us are really all the way there. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, but you know just glad that he's around and ironically the the song we're introducing this week is a song by one echo one which is not my time to die which uh, we talked about it before the show that it's just it's very ap appropriate and it wasn't really that we planned it that way it's just okay this is the song that's we're, we're that's coming out this week that we're going to do and we just ended up being able to coordinate it with you guys being on the show so that worked out really well so but um but we're going to wrap things up i, I do want to thank you know, lauren stan for being on the show this week we ran we we had an extra long show this week, but it was really a lot of fun. I know I know Bree was was happy to get on and, and talk with you guys and and whatnot. Of course, Kelsey joining us and and it's great to have her back on the show. So that's that's awesome. So we do want to thank you again. And, and uh, uh, I think other than that, you guys stay safe through all of this, and we look forward to seeing more work that you guys do. And uh, obviously, we'll t we'll talk more because you guys are, are you know taking on a little bit more of a, a leadership role and stuff that we do with the Twisted Angels in Canada. So, obviously, we'll talk to you guys more and more as time progresses as well. So, but uh, thanks again for being on the show, guys, and we will talk to you guys soon. All right. Oh, and hey, real quick before we leave, Lauren, Sam, please let our listeners know where they can find you. Give them your Instagrams and stuff like that where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Glittering Gypsy Girl XO. 
And you can also find me on Facebook at Glittering Gypsy Girl. Um, and Stan can be found at... <laughs> he was just waiting for you to tell him. Stan can be found at, on Instagram at Gypsy underscore Swede. So G-Y-P-S... Why? Why? Underscore... <laughs> S W E D E. All right. And he also has a Facebook page. Finally. Is it Gypsy Sweet or G Sweet? Uh, G Sweet. <laughs> That's why he needs me, folks. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be posting all of these on the Facebook page and my page. And, and so if you didn't catch it or didn't catch the spelling, you can find them on the Twisted Hour radio page and mine. Awesome. All right, well, thanks again, guys. You guys take care. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, this is Rev Lee with Twisted Angels. Tune into the Twisted Farm Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern on WBUZ 95. Hope to see you there. All right, and that will be a wrap for this week's show. We went really extra long this week, but it was fun. We had a good time with Stan and Laura. We want to thank them again for being on the show. You can catch us, uh, you find us on Facebook at The Twisted Hour. You can also find us on Instagram, uh, look us up at The Twisted Hour. And uh, we are on WBZ95 and Orange Radio. Now, WBZ95 is down at the moment, obviously, you know, because of the uh, virus, but hopefully everything will be back up and running next week, and we hope everybody stays safe. And uh, we want to thank Stan and Laura again for being on the show. It was awesome. It was great. And uh, I'm supposed to mention Beaver at least a couple times on, on the end of the show here uh, because I missed that segment uh, with, with Brianna on the show. But that was, uh, from what I understand, there's a lot of Beaver being mentioned. I don't know if there's a lot of Beavers in Canada, but there's quite a few here in uh, Pennsylvania where we're located. So, uh, so we uh, hope everybody has fun uh, Beaver hunting. And uh, we will have a great weekend. And everybody stay safe. And we will hear you next week. And this week's song is uh, wasn't even planned. It's by a group called One Echo One. Uh, good friends of ours, actually. Uh, I've had an opportunity to photograph them a couple times and, and see them. Um, they've been on hiatus. We have featured a couple of their other songs uh, before on our show. And uh, they are coming back this summer, uh, hopefully, uh, to go back on tour so we're looking forward to that but we're going to uh, play their song uh, Not My Time to Die which is really appropriate uh, considering you know our discussion with uh, Stan and his accident and everything but uh, it just kind of happened that way that wasn't even planned so we're going to wish everybody a great weekend thanks again to Stan and Laura Kelsey and Bree for helping out on the show uh, my name is Mike and we look forward to seeing you next week be cool, stay safe and get twisted Your seven figure grams from across the room. I see your patience are short with all these dancing fools. I see that you're the type of girl that likes a tattoo. I've seen the way you looked at me when I came walking.